This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash hue for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code hue at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. One of the great ironies of our time is that in the age of social media, there is, one could argue, and in fact, many, including academicians, do, a loneliness epidemic. But it doesn't have to be that way. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and let's begin with this. When you hear the words street photography, do you immediately conjure up images of a solo shooter? Is that how you shoot? It's certainly understandable if your answer to both questions is yes. After all, legendary street photographers like Henri Cartier-Bresson, Robert Duaneau, Elliot Erwitt, Joel Meyerowitz, and many, many others were, are, pretty much solo shooters. Street photography in particular, whether by legends or mere mortals like us, most often is a solo sport, was especially in the film era. Darkroom work, for most of us who grew up with it, was solo work inherently, and I, for one, loved it. But here's the thing. Do you know, for example, that when Elliot Erwitt photographed his famous bulldog in New York, he wasn't alone, that he wasn't even carrying a camera. He was walking with his friend Hiroji Kubata as they happened upon the scene, and Elliot asked him if he could borrow his camera. Yeah, of course, a Leica. 23 frames later, Tri-X on Hiroji's Leica, Elliot had the shot. It literally was the last shot. He didn't bother to shoot the rest of the 36 exposure roll. Just a side note, Claudia and I have a small signed print of it on our mantle, which we bought a couple of years ago after spending time with Elliot during a conversation we recorded at the International Center of Photography. I'll put a link down in the show notes to my conversation with him back in 2018, again at ICP in New York City. Or... How about Joel Meyerowitz? Do you know that when he first got started, he'd often go out shooting on the streets of New York with another legendary street photographer before either of them was a legend? I'm talking about Gary Winogrand. Do you know that one day in 1963, the day after he shot his first rolls of film as the photographer he would become, Joel bumped into another young photographer at the very same lab where he was picking up his film, an Englishman named Tony Ray Jones. They became friends, and they sometimes shot on the street together. I will put another link down in the show notes below to my conversation with Joel three years ago, courtesy of Leica. Let's go beyond a single friend to talk about community. Sure, in 2024, we have Facebook groups and photo sharing sites, all good if non-corporeal. But do you know about the mid-20th century photo leak in New York City? Or what came to be known as the New York School of Photography? Of course, Many of us get into photography because all one needs is a camera, a lens, film, maybe, and one's self. And most of the time we want it that way. Fair enough. But there is something wonderful, next level, really, about being able to share one's passion with like-minded people, not just through websites, books, or polite dinner conversation, but out in the real world, engaged in that passion in real time, where the joy of discovery, the rapture, really, if you're lucky, 
of being alive can be shared. I mean, that's just a trip, especially with the right people. Most especially, I think, yeah, I know, with the right person. In any case, being part of something bigger than one's self is a far more obvious point in, say, the music business. Just think Laurel Canyon in the 1960s and 70s. And if you don't know about that place in that time, you must see the documentary Echo in the Canyon. Or, hey, the Beatles. Think Simon and Garfunkel, the Miles Davis Quartet, the Bob James Trio. You get the idea. Or think, in another sector, industrial design, as in Charles and Ray Eames. I think of them often. Although, yeah, okay, I think about the Beatles more often. But because a social or communal context is far less obvious in the world of street photography these days, I thought I'd do my small part to write this particular wrong. So, although many of you come to this channel to learn about gear, hey, I get it. If you've watched enough of my videos, you'll have heard me say on more than one occasion, yes, it's about the gear, but no, it's not about the gear. It's about the people. And while what I mean most often is that it is what the photographer has here, here, and here that count far more than the equipment for crafting images, it also means that taking photographs out on the street with people, not just of people, that is, a friend, a lover, a group, who share your passion for or curiosity about the genre, can be an extraordinarily life-affirming experience. And I encourage you to find those people, find that tribe, if you will, and experience what I'm talking about for yourself. And while Claudia and I practice what we preach, We've been photographing together since before we were married. And we've been running our own street photography workshops for the last five years. I'll put a link in the show notes below. You most certainly do not have to buy your way into what I'm talking about. I'll make this very personal from a completely different angle. Back in 2004, I had a healthcare scare during a business trip in Europe. I came back figuring I'd been dehydrated, maybe jet lagged, probably jet lagged, quite possibly hypochondriacal. But just a few weeks later, there I was inside a heart lung machine at NYU undergoing open heart surgery, the notion of ever running another marathon as far removed as it could possibly be. Yet. In the following months of rehab, I found an online group of other former runners who'd also had open heart surgery. And as we got to know each other online, a few of us decided that we should actually meet in real life and do a marathon relay because that's all any of us could do at the time. And that meant five of us splitting up the 26.2 miles. And we did it. Over the next decade, we cheered each other, we commiserated with each other, and the only consistent costs were the entry fees to the many events we did together and separately in that time. This affiliation was literally life-saving. I ran my final marathon, New York, of course, in 2011. I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea. I was dog slow, but that doesn't matter. The bigger point, the only point of this video was, is this. Although I ran it alone that year, I wasn't alone at all. I carried every one of my teammates in my heart, my family at multiple stations along the way even closer. The experience dramatically richer for it and burned into my memory. Which, as I wrap this up, is just another way of saying, whatever your passion, if you can find your tribe, 
even just one other person with whom you can share the joys of that passion in the real world, your life can be so much richer. You do not need to feel alone. You are not alone. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. That's a big one and an easy one because it's free and more than two thirds of you don't. And or join the conversation in the comments section below because this is an exceptionally knowledgeable and generous audience. If you want to learn more about our street photography workshops, streets of New York, streets of Paris, Berlin, or Tokyo, custom private photo walks in New York City only, or want to explore private Zoom sessions for portfolio reviews, gear selection, and the like, no travel required, hop over to www.3bmep.com. Finally, please consider supporting our work by joining us here on YouTube, purchasing official Three Blind Men and an Elephant swag, dropping us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially by becoming a patron over on Patreon, all links down below. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.